Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are going to be creating exactly what you see in front of you, all in Procreate from scratch using only two brushes. So the first brush is my free mono weight Procreate brush. I will leave a link in the video description so you can go and pick that up. And the second brush is a texture brush that is a default brush in Procreate, which we'll get to in just a few minutes. So this is the final outcome. So these are peeling Polaroids. So it looks like like down here we're using three different styles of shadows so they all look like they're kind of pushing forward or peeling forward from the wall that they're affixed to differently so you can see all these different shadow kinds down here so we're just going to jump in and get started I'm going to create a new document that is screen size all right, so this is a screen size document. I've put together a custom color palette for this video, and I will make this available for a free download too. So just hit that link in the video description. You can go download this and install it and Procreate for free. So we're going to start off by setting our background color to the light blue. So I'm just going to drag the color and drop it in. If you get stuck anywhere along the way, I do offer a free Procreate for Beginners course. So I'll leave a link in the video description to that as well. So if you have questions about anything, check out that course and you'll be able to pick up with this tutorial and know exactly what you're doing. This tutorial is very beginner friendly, but a little bit more advanced than just the basics. All right, so now that we have our background all set, I'm going to rename this just background. And I'm going to create a new layer right above it. And this layer we're going to title white Polaroid. Okay, and we're going to grab our white and I've got my free mono weight Procreate brush right here. And all you're going to do is roughly draw a rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect. So this is my rectangle and just hold it. Do not lift up your stylus when you finish it. And you can see it's a little wonky looking. So you're gonna tap edit shape up here and then choose rectangle and that will straighten it out for you. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger, I think. That looks better. I'm going to actually rotate this a little bit cause it's a little crooked. There we go. All right, so now we wanna fill this white part in. So I'm just going to grab the white and drop it in and that fills it in with white. And now we're going to create a new layer right on top of it. And this is going to be where your photo is. The photo frame is what we'll name it. And this time we're going to grab the pink color and return to our brush and just draw a square right inside of your Polaroid. And same thing we did before, you're just gonna hold and then release edit shape and I'm going to make this a square. I'm actually going to make this more like a rectangle because I'm just going to bring this bottom line down just a little bit so it looks a little more like a Polaroid where the bottom part is a little chunkier than the frame around it. So when you're all set, we're going to drag our pink color right into that new square that we have. I'm actually gonna nudge it to the right a little bit so it looks a little more even on the sides and that looks good. So the next thing we wanna do is just drop in some kind of artwork within our photo frame. So I'm going to create a new layer right above the photo frame and I'm just going to grab my yellow color and write the word, hey. Okay, and we're going to apply a clipping mask to this. So tap on the layer thumbnail and choose clipping mask and that will mask it inside of that photo frame. So it's stuck right inside of that shape. Tap, tap this down just a little bit so it's not so close to the top edge. All right. So from here, we're going to create our washi tape that's holding it onto the wall. So we're going to create a new layer above our writing layer. And this one we're going to name tape. This is going to be yellow. So I've got my yellow already selected. I'm still going to be using the mono weight brush for this. I'm going to draw another rectangle. Hold it and let it snap and then choose edit shape and choose rectangle and then fill it in. All right, make sure it's a good size proportionally. I think this one needs to be a little bit smaller. I'm going to tap my magnetics down here. That way it scales uniformly because I like the proportions on this. It just needed to be a little bit smaller. Let's zoom out. All right, that looks good. Okay, and the tape needs to look like it's cut on the edges. So we're going to grab our eraser tool and we're going to select the mono weight brush again. I'm going to reduce the size way down to like 2% and then just do a rough cut on the side and then erase away the rest of the pieces. All right, and we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side. Doesn't have to be perfect at all, just a rough zigzag and then erase away those extra pieces. All right, now we have our little piece of tape and I'm going to rotate it 
So I'm going to disable my magnetic so I can rotate it freely. Just a nice little angle so it looks a little more organic the way it's placed on there. And now we want this to look like washi tape so it needs a little bit of transparency to it. So return to your eraser and this time we're going to choose a charcoal eraser. So enter your charcoals and choose the 4B compressed charcoal texture. And we're going to keep the size around 20%. And we're just going to tap on the tape and that will give it a nice texture. And that actually looks good. I don't think I need to erase any more. Let's zoom out. Yeah, that looks good. So we're just gonna leave that. I actually think I want this to be a little skinnier. All right, our tape is all good to go. So the next thing we're going to do is add some writing onto the base of our Polaroid. So right above the white Polaroid layer, we're going to add a layer and I'm going to make this one the dark blue color. I'm going to make sure I have my mono weight brush selected. I'm gonna reduce the size down to about 5% and just write shadow one. Okay, so now we can put our shadow on it. So in order to do this, you're going to come to your white Polaroid layer, tap on it and choose select, create a new layer, and then make sure you have the dark blue selected as your color, tap on this brand new layer and choose fill layer. And that will fill this whole layer, that selection with blue. Now this blue part needs to be behind our white Polaroid. So I'm going to select the white Polaroid and just drag it right above the blue layer. So the blue layer is behind it. We just can't see it right now. I'm going to label this one shadow. And now we need to create the shape of that shadow. So with your shadow layer selected, you're going to hit the cursor icon up here and then choose warp down here. Now I'm going to grab this bottom node and just bring it down towards the left slightly. And I'm going to do the same thing with the left side, bring it to the right slightly. And it's important that I have a curve right in the middle because that's what gives this shadow that feeling that it's lifting up is that curve. So I'm gonna bring this a little closer to the edge. I've got that nice shadow. We're going to add a blur on this and we wanna make sure that the blur only appears down here. Up here, I still have that shape. So if I blur it, it's going to start showing up around the edges up here and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to grab these nodes and bring them in. It doesn't matter what these look like. I just want this shape away from the edge. So when I add that blur to it, you're not going to see it. So that looks good. I'm going to bring in this edge a little bit too, just slightly. Okay, so now I can deselect it and now I'm going to apply a blur. So hit your magic wand, choose Gaussian Blur, and I'm going to drag this up to about, let's see, 12% I think looks good. Yeah, 12%. Okay, and the last thing we need to do with our shadow is just apply a multiply blend mode. So it blends a little more like a shadow into the light blue background. So I'm going to tap multiply right here and then reduce the opacity down to about 65%. And that looks good. All right, so now we're going to create a copy of this so we don't have to start from scratch for our next shadow. So back in your layers, we're going to group everything we've done so far together except for our background layer. So tap on your tape layer, drag each of the other layers to the right, and then choose group up here and close your group, rename this shadow one. Okay, and now we're going to duplicate this. So slide it to the left, duplicate. This bottom one, we're going to rename shadow number two. All right, and we just need to move it to the right. So I'm going to hit the cursor icon. I'm going to make sure my magnetics is selected down here. So when I'm dragging it, I've got that line to keep it perfectly straight. And now we can start editing this one. So we're going to change the color of the photo frame, the lettering, and the tape. And then we'll change the word to shadow number two and then change the shadow. So we're just going to come into our new group for shadow number two. We're going to tap on the photo frame first. I'm going to make sure my dark blue is selected right here. And I'm going to choose this magic wand and select recolor. And that will recolor the background. If it's not recoloring the background, just move these crosshairs so they're hovering over the background and then you'll get the same thing. Now we're going to change the lettering to pink. So I'm going to select my lettering. I'm going to choose pink because whatever color you're changing it to is whatever the circle color dot is up here. So I've got pink selected. I've got my lettering layer selected. 
tap on your magic wand, choose recolor, and make sure the crosshairs are over your lettering. And now that's all set. And then the last thing we need to do is change the tape to the same color as the lettering, so that's pink. So select the tape, hit the magic wand, recolor, drag the crosshairs over the tape, and then you're good to go. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is change the word shadow number one to shadow number two. So I'm gonna come down to this layer, select my eraser, make sure it's the mono weight brush for my eraser, and erase away the number one. And select my dark blue color, grab my mono weight brush, and just write the number two. Okay. And now we can delete the shadow number one completely because we won't need it for this. We're going to completely redo it. So I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did over here when I was making the shadow. So select your white Polaroid, tap on the thumbnail, choose select, create a new layer right above it. Make sure your dark blue is selected. Tap on it and choose fill layer. Now grab your white Polaroid layer and drag it above that shadow layer. I'm going to rename this shadow number two. Okay, and now let me zoom out a little bit so we can see it. Hit your cursor icon, hit warp. This time we want our shadow to be curved down here. So I'm going to grab the middle part of my warp and just drag it down. I don't need it to be that big. Let me just move that up a little bit. It's a subtle shadow that's happening right here. Okay, and then the same thing we did before, I don't want the blur to extend beyond the edges up here, so I'm just going to bring in these nodes. It doesn't matter how far you bring them in. You just wanna make sure they're away from the edge. All right, so now we're going to apply a Gaussian blur. So drag this up. Let's get to 12% again. I think this one could go to 13. It's a little blurrier. And now we want to apply a multiply blend mode, and let's reduce this down to about 60%. Okay, so that looks good. And now we can move on to Polaroid number three. So I'm going to drag this over to the left, choose duplicate, and the bottom one, we're going to rename this shadow three. And now we need to move it to the right. So tap on my cursor icon, make sure magnetics is selected, and then drag it over. Okay, that looks good. Let's see, I'm going to select all of these and make sure they're a little more centered. All right, that looks good. And now we can change up the colors for this third shadow the same way we did for the second shadow. So this time our photo frame is going to, let's see, yellow is the next color. So I'm going to select yellow right here with the photo frame layer selected. Hit your magic wand, choose recolor. Make sure your crosshairs are on the photo frame area. And then for the lettering, we're going to do dark blue. So let me select dark blue right here and then choose recolor. Okay, and then the same thing for the tape. All right, and then we just need to relabel this as shadow number three. Okay, we're going to delete our shadow number two, do the exact same thing we did before, select our white Polaroid, create a new layer right above it, make sure your dark blue is selected, tap on it and choose fill layer, grab your white Polaroid layer, drag it above, this new layer, rename this shadow number three. Okay, and now we're going to do the shape for shadow number three. So hit your cursor icon, hit warp, and you're just going to grab these edges, these corners, and pull them out just slightly right here. And then we're going to bring in the top parts once again. Okay, once that's all set, now we're going to apply Gaussian Blur again. Let's bring it up to 12% looks good. And then we're going to apply multiply blend mode again and reduce this down to about 60%. All right, so that looks good. So just to finish this off, we're going to apply a texture to the background and then a large shadow. So for the texture, we're going to, let's collapse this. So everything's super organized right here. Right above the background layer, we're going to create a new layer. We're going to set this layer to the same color as our background, but we're going to change the blend mode of it to overlay. So hit contrast and then choose overlay right here. And this one we're going to call background texture. And now we're going to grab our texture brush. So in your charcoals, we're gonna use the same exact brush that we were using to texturize our washi tape. So it's the 4B compressed, and I'm going to keep this all the way maxed out to the very top. And I'm just going to come over this lightly. 
and you can see that nice texture showing up. I'm going to reduce the opacity of it a little bit. I think I'm going to come down to like 75. So it's subtle back there. It's not too harsh. And now we're going to drop that big shadow right up at the top. So I'm going to create a new layer right on top of everything. And this is going to be called Big Shadow. And I'm going to grab my dark blue and grab my mono white brush again. This time I'm just going to draw a big shape like it's a giant leaf. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's actually better if it's not. And you're just going to fill it in. And now we're going to position it where we want it. Undo your magnetics so you can freely transform it a little bit easier. So I'm just going to keep it kind of up here. That looks good. I'm going to fill in this little corner too. All right, so now we're going to apply Gaussian Blur and this Gaussian Blur is going to be a pretty heavy blur. We're going to go up to like 27%. And then we're going to apply a multiply blend mode and then reduce the opacity down to like 20%. Let's go to 30. See what that looks like. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. All right, so that is how to create a peeling Polaroid effect in Procreate from scratch using only two brushes, my free mono white brush and the texture brush that's in the charcoal section of your Procreate brushes. Once again, I'll leave links to the color palette, the free brush, as well as my free Procreate for Beginners course right in the video description. So if you'd like to pick those up, they are right there. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new Procreate tutorials in the future. For more design and lettering tutorials, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. If you decide to try this out and you post it on Instagram, I would love it if you tag me. My handle is at every Tuesday. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.